Though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we won't fear. For he's with us. Our God.
to worship the Lord, right? With a sacrifice of praise. But in the Bible it says, when you make an altar, it must not be made near a grove or a tree. Is the reason for that, brethren? Why do you think it should be near a grove or a tree? A grove is like an image, right? And a tree. It should not be near that. Why? Is God blind? No. He wants your sacrifice to be open. What a brethren? Sorry, just... We want to give to God must be open. No cover up, no pretense, no falsehood. Real. He's Alpha. He's the first. He's the last. And in the middle. He said, Look, thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any tree near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make, which you shall make, yeah? So no tree, neither shall thou set, the, set up any image in your heart. Come on, brethren. In your heart that God hates. This is worship, you know. He tells us when we worship what we must do. Neither shall thou set up any image which the Lord hates. Yes. Any imagination. imagination of your heart, yeah? Yes. Oh. That's last verse. So, I'm telling you, your altar tonight, 
of worship, your place of worship. No grove, no tree, nothing in your heart, no image in your heart to stop the altar from being accepted. So if you've got sin or anything in your heart right now, get rid of it. Is that right, evangelist? He tells you clearly what he wants. But after you repeat it every week, reminding you, it tells us the altar must be free from groves of trees, overshadowing it. Let nothing of a shadow of praise tonight. Amen. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we know, we know this already, yeah? yeah? What we give tonight must be blemish. Yeah. And I, I, don't, I don't want to come here and just have service. I want my sacrifice to be acceptable. Amen. Yeah. You know, when, when you go to work, right? Monday morning, you don't want to work, do you? Monday morning is uh, You don't go work, you don't get paid. That is true. That is true. That is true. Right? You can sky lock and miss days. A call up in office, absent. Get warning. If you don't improve, they sack you. That's man made rules. Come in here and play with God, he will sack you. They get rid of you. Tell your sacrifice to be nothing to him. I'm very serious about what I give to God nowadays. I've been serious before, but even now, he will get rid of me. He will get rid of you. If you're not giving what he wants, he'll get rid of you. He purges the tree, right? That may bring forth much. If we don't bring forth, he is cut off and thrown in the fire. He said it himself. The worst we don't joke, take brethren. He don't joke coming out cup and he don't joke. He has to accept it. If you got anything in your life that is wrong, get rid of it before you open your your mouth. Because you get cursed. God hates it. He says, I hate it. Anything, any my any image in your heart. That you put before the altar, what he hates, backbiting, wickedness, malice, anger, rot. Plus the other things you do in secret, which he hates, is in the heart. Get rid of it. Amen. Amen. So I'm, I'm, too, I'm excited, you know. I felt so tired when I came here. But oh God said, tired or not tired, sick or not sick. Get on with it. Yes. Like if I take your breath tonight and you drop like a tree, then you're going to end. Amen. Come on, bro. You see what we're living in? Amen. The breath we have is not ours. It's not lent to us. And if, if you don't do, take care of what God gives you, you take it away. God is no respect of a person. And the scripture we read this morning, what was it? Acts 11. Acts 11, yeah? Acts 11? Yes. Amen. We should stand and read Acts 11. Yes. Amen. Actually, let me show us down, please, brethren. And make sure tonight when you give your offering, your sacrifice, there's no grove near your heart. No, nothing in your man, imagination. Nothing is there. If you feel this, you have a burden, your altar is always open. Always open. Never close. Let's read it together. Acts chapter 11. And...
words. Amen. Sister Annette, Sister Annette, come and share what the Lord laid in your heart. Amen. 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 Pray where she comes. Amen. Amen. Lord, praise you, praise um, Yeah, I was just with my pastor, officers, praise the wonderful name of Jesus. I'm just listening and enjoying the word of God tonight. But what was laid on my heart in the week, um, when it was saying, when, oh, I say, well, God is a great God. Yes. He's supreme, his majesty and power. He's high above the, the earth is high and exalted and lifted up. I said, what is man that he is mindful of him? We are mere dust, but what get me brethren, what tears came to my eyes when that song says, Jesus rose from supper. He laid aside his garment, stooped down, the great king of heaven, stooped down and washed disciples' feet. The great God of heaven stooped down and washed the disciples' feet. Amen. And I said, God, give me that humility. Amen. Give me that. Me. You know, sometimes we have Lord's Supper, we're going to wash our hand. Yes. When we wash one foot, we're going to run and wash our hand yes. because we feel, oh, I don't like touching people's foot. But the great almighty God yes. stooped down and he washed the disciples' yes. feet. Yes. And when Peter considered it, he said, not only my feet, Lord, but all but my head. But then wash me, Lord. Then wash me with his soap and I shall be made whole in Jesus' name. Anointing when it starts. Yes. Amen, 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 amen. 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 Song says, Wash me in the and I shall be whiter than snow. I shall be whiter than the snow.
verse, verse 16. Then remembered I the word of the Lord. I remembered. Don't forget the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye not me, ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. That word shall is a definite word from God. It's up to you. When God says say shall, yes, it's, not it's not a maybe. The commandments, thou shall not, thou shall. It shall mean it's conditioned that it's, it was a, it's going to be done. Yes. But we have to accept it. Brother Dave Pike. Come, Brother Dave, come. Yes. Amen. Brother Dave Pike, come, come, come. Praise the Lord Church. Giving God thanks for life and strength. Um, I just I just want to share a testimony. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Sunday morning, I wasn't feeling too well. And um that was saying that I should stay home. But I was like, I still want to come to church even though I wasn't feeling the best. And in the whole of the service, I was sat in the back, um, head down, and as church was coming to a close. I was about to go outside to get some fresh air. Then they called the young people to prayer. Mm -hmm. So then I come up to the front and I went to prayer. Then I went home and I slept. And when I woke up, mm -hmm. I was at feeling well. Mm -hmm. And I was struggling to get up the stairs. And um, mum saw me. And then I ended up in the bathroom. And um, basically I had a seizure. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to the hospital and they said that my Blood sugar levels was low, Jesus. but that was, again, it doesn't make sense because I had eaten just before I went to bed. And um, they done their checks, I done blood tests, I was in the hospital until about 5 a.m. Um, but my blood tests came back there. Thank you, Richard. I'm just thanking God that I came to church and I got prayer. Amen. 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 God is working every time. Yes. Amen. I'd like the writer's stars to come and sing. Bless them, Lord. Come, come. Praise God. Write the stars. Church, please pray for us. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I face?
from you. Where are you taking it from? Um, in January, but I'm there, let's see, because I had a urine test, and they said that when the results come, they said my kidney wasn't good. So I had to come into my blood test, they did further damage. So anyway, I came in the first Sunday night here at church, and then the altar call. And when I go to the altar, pastor will search and see what they do. Well, they said my kid is not doing well at the moment. They just they want to upset you and be prayed. Mm -hmm. And I came back the following Sunday for the day again. And the family day, she lays on the last stomach. I went to her and she prayed. And then she was waiting for the blood test result to come back. Yeah. And then wait for a long time, but it was two weeks for the result to come back. So even when the woman called me from Sunday, this and the morning, she was talking all different things. Not getting to the point. So when she almost said, I said to her, What about the results from my kid? No, oh, oh, it's okay, it's normal. Your kid is
and the brethren weren't here, and the whole day, night and day, was all about faith. Amen. Brother Ian went up, he exalted about faith, yes. having faith. I think it was Minister Miller, they exult about faith. Yes. We were singing songs, it was all about having faith in God. And brethren, it went right back to the next service, and it was just having faith in God. Amen. Brethren, church finished, and I went home. As soon as I went home, I not even put my bag down properly, my phone around. When I looked at my phone, it was my son, Kevin. And I said to him, what is it, Kevin? He said to me, Mom, I've got three, I've got an, I've got an exam and it's going to last for three days. And Mom, I can't do it, I'm going to quit the job. I said to him, what? Quit what job because of exam? I said to him, I said, Kevin, the same God who made you get a job is the same God that will make you pass the exam. Yes, and brethren, he was like, he was so annoyed because I, I didn't tell him what the devil wanted me to tell him to quit the job. So the last thing I know I said to him, I said to him, defeat is one word I don't use. Amen. Brethren, the exam so is an is an electrical exam and a gas exam. So he passed the electrical exam and now he has to face the big gun. The gas is the hardest one. And brethren, he had to, it was so intense, it took three days for the exam. So he, he didn't stay at home at all. So he went, he booked himself into a hotel because he don't want no disturbance. And brethren, Monday came, and when I saw four o'clock, I said, you know what, I'm not even gonna text him to find out how they want to go. But later on in the evening, when he came in, I said to him, how was the, the, the first exam today? And he whinged and he whinged and he whinged and he said, it was all right, but I'm going back because there's another two days. And brethren, Tuesday, I never bother him. Wednesday, final day of the exam, he dis he's coming home now. And when he got home, I didn't call him, I didn't text him or anything. When he got home, he came and he knocked my door and he said, Mom, I'm home. I said to him, what happened? He said to me, Mom, I'm mashing up. I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, I'm saying this to say that you might be encouraging somebody in church. You don't In yourself. Amen. Have faith in God. Yes. Because faith without work is yes. dead. Amen. It's a good thing I had already put the work in. Yes. And I stood on the word of God. Yes. And I said to him, defeat is one word I don't use. Amen. And Bridget, he is now out on his own, just minimal shadowing. In order for him to be out in the job, he has to pass electric and he has to pass gas. I'm bridging him, mash up the teeth. I'm telling you, God is good. God is good. When you have your sinner children or your sinner family, and you see how, you know, they, they, don't, they don't have no faith. Everything should go for them good, 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 good. Everything should say green, green, green. But when the trial comes, yes. brethren, be a good backup for them. Yes. Let them know that God is real. Yes. Let them know that God can do it. And if he can't, there's nothing else that can be done. Yes. You pray my strength Praise in Jesus. God. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You have come to the end of our testimony. And we sing a life before the end. I am redeemed, but not with silver. I am redeemed, but not with God. I am redeemed by the blood of Jesus. That 
As it lays in my heart, I'll ask Mother Lake to lay hands on Brother Joel. Brother Joel, go over there to Mother Lake. Just by faith, by faith. Mother Lake, lay a hand on this young man for me, please. Oh, Mother Lake, lay a hand on him. Pray for Brother Joel. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Just. Amen, amen, amen. is wrong with me. Yes. I come, Lord, because he needs you yes. and whatever it is. Yes. You made man and everything yes. in this world. So therefore, you are able to fix everything yes. for everything. And so, Lord Jesus, yes. you walk among men at one time. Glory to God. Amen. You were always healing, yes. bringing trouble. But when the time came, they all turned against you. Tonight we have this privilege that we bring to the cross at this time your yes. son. We ask in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about his faith. Please increase it at this time. Help him to know and to believe that thou art the one and only true God. And all healing comes through you. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. I ask you to touch your son at this time. Anoint him in the name of Jesus from the crown of his head right down to the sole of his very feet and Lord whatever is causing him hallelujah so much trouble all along the enemy is after each and every one of them and so this one has escaped the net. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We ask you at this time, God, to keep him holy. Keep him pure. Keep him true. Yes, Lord. Whatever he does, Lord God, may it be done because of the influence of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost? Yes. I call on Bless your son, yes, Lord God, the blood prevail. Yes, the blood prevail. Yes, the blood of the blessed Hallelujah. has power to save. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, yes, for hearing these feeble words. Yes, it's not that I'm worthy, but so art God. Yes, Lord. And thou alone know the heart of every one of us. Yes, Lord. I pray that you're creating him yes, know that heart yes, to take him through life's journey. Yes, Lord. No matter what. Yes, Lord. You stand by yes, him Lord. and support your son in yes, Jesus' Lord. name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Oh. 
Now, Brother Howard, where is everybody, Brother Howard? Amen. Hold the fort. He's coming. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. That was a shock, but give God thanks. Um, God is such a good God. It is true that God is coming soon. And that we ought to be ready for the master's return. I, I was saying, I said before that Queen Victoria, when she was going back to Buckingham Palace, and then when she got to the gates, she just couldn't understand why her guards didn't come to meet her. And then when they checked on the guards, everyone were drunk because they had been drinking. And uh, hence the reason why they, she made a law that they had to, for a hundred years, to check on the guards and change it ever so often. But the point I'm making is that, is that when Jesus comes, when God comes, we need to be watching and waiting. The Bible said that he is coming back for a, a, a church without spots, a wrinkle that is washed in the blood of the Lamb. And the Bible said that the angel said he saw a number. John said he saw a number. And he said, do you not know who these are? He said, these are they who were washed in the blood of the Lamb and made their robes white. So I'm saying tonight that God is coming soon. And the Bible said, every eye shall see him. And you know, I was thinking before Minister Miller called me, the song was, I was thinking about the songwriter, that when the person got this blessed salvation, and they wrote the, the pendy song that says, a wonderful savior is Jesus my Lord. Said a wonderful savior to me. Said he hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. Where rivers of pleasure I see. Amen. And the part that got me said, Glory. the part that got me, there's a verse that says, I sing in my rapture. Oh, said, Oh, glory to God Amen. for such a redeemer as mine. He said, He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock Amen. that shadows a dry, thirsty life. Glory to God. He hideth my life. In the depths of his love, glory, glory, and he covers me with his hand, and I can sing, Yes, I'm overshadowed by his boundless love. I have protection from the Lord above. Jesus walks beside me every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every passing day. And he said, The Lord is my light and my salvation said whom shall I fear the Lord is a strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid says when the wicked came upon me to eat my flesh glory 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 they stumbled and they fall because the Lord which deep in me he never slumber nor sleep so I serve this risen Savior and I know he watches over me the song says my heavenly father watches over me says comes one day from day to day my heavenly father watches over me and I'm saying the song says wall of fire glory glory round upon me glory I have nothing to fear because God is my protector. God is my rock. God is my shield. And we sing it today. Said I will say of the Lord, glory. He is glory, my refuge, glory. I will say of the Lord, glory. He is my fortress. He is the mighty God. He is a strong tower. And in him will I put my trust. In Jesus name, in Jesus name, in Jesus name, we are victorious by the blood of Jesus Christ. Satan is defeated and God is glorified. The blood of Jesus Christ prevail against the powers of darkness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord is the strength, glory of my life and whom 
shall I fear glory. The Lord which keepeth me, he will not slumber nor sleep. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Breath of Jesus. Amen. We shall sing. Yes, I'm shout out. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We are overshadowed by his mighty hands and we have protection from above. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. No need to fear. No need to be in trouble. We are covered by the power of God. Hold on. Don't let go. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us just stand and give God thanks for his protection. Come on. Stand and give God thanks for his goodness. He keeping us alive today. That's a blessing. Though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we won't fear, for he's with us, our root, our staff, and he comforts us. He won't, he prepare a table right in the presence where of our enemies, and he anointed our head with oil of gladness and watch our cup overflow surely goodness surely brethren goodness and mercy shall follow me but some of the days my life and what? Don't go nowhere. Don't run away. Stay in the house of the Lord and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for not a few weeks. Sometimes when I feel like it but forever. We have no need to fear. No need to fear. And the song said, I'm of a shadow, I'm going to click our nice offering. Oh, by his boundless love and I am protection.
We have a request to song from Odessa Cream. Song request, amen. And praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Greetings, everyone. Just remember, hope you pray for us when we sing the song. It's going to be for in Jesus' name. Amen. You are here. Working in. This place, I worship you. I worship you. You are here. in this place, I worship you. I worship you.
would love Brother Tom's to give the final word, Brother Tom's. Brother Tom, pray me that comes. Amen. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. That is who you are. Amen. Before you come, let's get to Oi, Brother Tom. That God give him a word for us tonight. Amen. Bless him. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. God is a good God. All the time. First, must give honor to God. With my grandmother and pastor, family, visiting friends. In Jesus' name. As I was thinking, and as the service was going on, and we talk about faith and holding on, and God always look after his people. And I was thinking that no matter what the situation, throughout the Bible, and up till today, no matter what situation, God people, they never suffer. No matter the hardship, God always provide for them and he always protect them and I'm just thinking I'm just thinking that unless we are like the rebellious Israelite or put our hand to inquity we won't go in captivity unless so even if famine is on the land and, and I can make reference because even when the children of Israel when famine was in Egypt they were in a place called Goshen and even though the rest of the world was starvation and famine and everything they were in a bountiful land flourishing land and God provided for them and I'm just making reference to us today even though we're in such a, a time as now yes. that is unknown to man. Amen. Unless we put our hands to iniquity, or unless we are stiff-necked, or unless we are rebellious, Amen. no matter what's going on around us, we will always be in Goshen. We will always flourishing. Amen. We will always have Enough. Not our wants, but our needs. Just like when the children they were going through and God fed them with manna, He never gave them their wants, He gave them what they need for that day. And we just have to remember that God will supply our needs, not our wants. And I heard somebody said, You got to. You got to take there's a big sense of the nonsense sometimes. Yes. And sometimes you have to have a laugh with yourself. Yes. And they say, God is an all season. That is true. All so I say, either all season in God. Yes. So no matter what meat you are, yes. God can season you. Yes. If you are fishing, he can cover you. Yes. If you are pork, he can cover you. Yes. If you are chicken, he can cover you. Yes. It's an all season in God. Yes. So he will fix your business. Amen. Somebody say it's an all purpose, yes. God. Yes. No matter what purpose you're going on in your life, God is suitable yes. for that purpose. Yes. So if he's a nice neighbor, is the purpose. Yes. If he's the boss who are troubling your work, he is the purpose. Yes. Wife problem, hospital problem, if that purpose. Sickness, if that purpose, no matter what purpose it is, God can fix it. As Minister Miller said, but there's a condition. There's a condition, and that's where we falter. God is never got a problem. God never comes short anywhere through the Bible. Now, anywhere I've seen in my life on earth, if never God comes short, it's always man not fulfilling what God says. 
And God is a righteous God. And as the Bible says, God's not going to come down to my level. And as the pastor always said, God is alright, God is already in heaven. It's we have a need to go to heaven. It's we have a need that, because imagine, you live, you know, right, trying your best, you know, denying yourself, and you see all the lesbian, the, 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 the gay, and gunman and they're doing their thing they're doing all kind of thing and imagine you go in the same place with them so it's what you it's always what you want and my fellow brethren it's not an easy road not an easy road but it's what you want and all, all day all week yeah, I, I haven't got a chance to read this but it's been on my mind and I was thinking about it is when David was going through and he went and um, he was going through and the man cursed him and called him name. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm, I was trying to, it's on my mind all day, all week, and I was trying to think about it. He was going through yes. him, yes. call him a name, yes. call him a dirty dog, yes. and he have his peoples with him. Yes. You know, if he stood there, you say, he's a big man, he have his click behind him. Yes. And they want to move to the man. He said no. God allow him. And I'm thinking for us Christian. And I'm thinking through the story in my mind. Because I know I've read it. But I'm trying to. I want to refresh it in my mind. And if I recall good. David is going through a period in his life. David is going through a period in his life. We are. Almost everything is going wrong for him. If I can recall good, I think Saul was after his life. And he has to flee. And, and, and he's going through. And, and I'm just thinking, this is a man who got anointed and was, and was proclaimed that he's a man of a god own heart. A man who they say prophesied. A man who was doing God work, but at the point he was in his worst. Yes. And when you expect, you're the worst, you know, you expect at that time, listen, my God is going to come true for me. And my God is going to provide for me. And I'm just thinking, no doubt, the man then probably was hungry. The man then probably was thirsty. They were fatigued. They don't have a good bed to sleep in. They don't have nothing going for them at that moment. And when they think, when they're looking for shelter, for refuge, they get cursing. They get despised. They get no one to help. But the point that got me is, to all that, David turned and said, leave him alone. If God allow it. Can you know why? Even in today's law, you know, if I send somebody to go kill somebody, I am guilty of it because they're gonna say. David no. If he let his man kill that man, he guilty of murdering from God. And if you're working with God, and you are said in your that's why I said if it's, it's an individual thing. If you make up your mind to go through this with God, if you make up your mind and say, I want heaven to be my home, and I don't want to, to live in this life and deny myself and end up the same place as everybody else, you have to say, you have to, you have to have that in you to say, you know what? Leave him alone. You have to have to say, you know what? Leave him. You have to say, God, and just say, Jesus, Amen. and leave it. Yes. When they rise upon you at work, you have to just say, God. When your children are turned on you, you got to say, God. Yes. Amen. Wife, husband, you have to say, God. Yes. Because you want to make heaven your home. Yes. And if your friends around you and say, let me go defend it. Go on, man. Yes. If you have a sinner friend, you say, you know, and you say, have them ready on the heart. Let me go defend it. And once you associate with that, you're in problem with God. 
You have to let God fight your battle. You have to let God defend you. Because God knows what he's doing. And if God is leading you, and if God leads you down that path, and somebody curse you, because God wants you to curse you. So you have to hold fast and say, if God allow it, give God the glory. It's probably a trial. It's probably testing you to see if the anger is still in your heart. It's probably testing you to see if you're still quick temper to fight. Because if one time somebody could say nothing to you when you're in the world, either you, you put hands or you call your family, you say, wait until we come back. God wants to know if that's still in your heart. God wants to know if my is still there. God wants to know if, you're, if what you said is true. If you said, I alone shall take that lowly path yes. with Jesus, my Lord. Yes. Have made my choice forever. forever. So God wants to know if it's true. Yes. So if you said you make your choice, whatever come upon you, to God be the glory. Yes. It's not only in a good time. It's not only when things are going on for us. We we say I want prayer and God come true. Or we ask for this and God deliver. It's in the time of your trials and tribulation. How are you going to hold on? How are you going to turn back? How are you going to say it's too hard? I know they always say, oh, there's nothing in this world. There is, that's, there is only the part of it that makes sense. Nothing in this world that worth there's a lot of things in this world. Holy, holy, lot. Worthy, that's the part. So this, don't say there's nothing in this world for man. There's a lot. Or if it worth it, there's nothing in this world that worth living for. And that's true. Mankind, we are designed to worship. So, and to love. We're always going to want to worship something. We're always going to want to love somebody. Because that's how God made us to love him and to worship him. So we're always going to have that inner drive to worship and to love. So you know, you, if you're not worshiping God, you're worshiping something else. And if you're not loving God, you're loving something. Whether it's your money, whether it's your car, whether it's your job, and if it's your wife, some people worship their partner. Some people worship their image. Ha, ha boy. Come in front of the mirror. And you say, yes, I mean this. Ha, boy, you, you worship yourself. But you, you either. So we have to. You have to. It's, it's a, such a thin line, you know. It's really a thin line. You have to make sure, you have to check daily because we have an adversary that wants us to fail. He wants us to fail. And he's not going to use the things that you do not like or the things that you know you can easily get over. He's going to use the one that hurt the most. He's going to use the one that, that hit you so hard, that shake your foundation. That make you want to say, if you name of the God. He's going to hit you so hard. You might want to go get the shovel to go dig up that old man. You have to hold on. Amen. Talk from experience. I'm not just talking out my mouth. Hit you so hard that you said, listen. And you said, if I know if it could. Then I talk to him. Seeing it to your mouth, you know in your heart. Yes. This will never happen to me, you know. But David said, and listen, David, you know, I like, you can't take reference to David now. David go through it again. When David look and see, yeah, thing that is going through. Yes. Yeah, the man says, when him look at the wicked and see them are prosper, yes. when them are flourish. <laughs> I said he almost stumbled. But 
then the word of God in his heart bring back to remembrance that the only for a season the only thing you have to know that when you see all of that that go on here for those hold on and know that this run, this race is not for the swift it's not for how we come up it's a, it's a long distant thing so even if they run gone left you, you just take your time Take your time. Hold on to God and change in hand. Nobody run too fast and burn out yourself. And drop down along the wayside. Hold on. Try a little bit by day. A little bit by day. A little bit. And hold on to God. Help somebody if you can along the way. But make number one be you. Family. As I said. I don't know of this country and our surrounding country it doesn't look good it doesn't look good but we have an anchor keep us listen if a ship doesn't if, you're, if a ship doesn't drop their anchor you know they drift away water you know so if you don't anchor in Christ Jesus you're gonna drift away no matter how strong you are, no matter how much somebody gave me this parable a long time ago, they said, if you have a blazing fire, and the fire blazing with all the woods in it, and if you take one out of it and put it to the side, it's only a matter of time before that one out out. It's only a matter of time. So we have to stay together in the fire. We have to stay together. We have to encourage one another. We have to help one another. We have to look after one another. We have to pray for one another. And know that God, as the scripture said, there's only one God. Of us all. Don't watch faith. Don't watch the person. Don't watch the attitude. At the beatitude, should have a person, yeah, because we are not perfect. In my closing, we are not perfect. We are working towards perfection. We are saved to be saved. So, because of that, because we know that, and we know that, brother Tom still have a bit of rubbing down to do. Take time with me. God is not true with me yet. You know, my sister is working on her temper. Don't aggravate her. Help her, help her not so she can. You know, you, you know, you, you know, your brother still a come out of that dirty area. But Amen. we have to try pull him down now. Let me help him. because if whoever win a soul is wife, isn't it? In my clothing. And if I always said I do not believe in this, when you leave your brother there and you march up. Do not believe in that. You cannot walk. Past. I cannot say, man, go to Jesus over there. So I say, brother Gilbert, yes, so I suffer. And I walk past him and say, no, I'm going to go to God. No. He helped me, brother, old man. I say, yes. And then, if it won't be taken time, I will make it all here. My family, we serve in a big, yes, mighty, wonderful, wonderful God. Always, yes. always victorious. Always watching. Always, always, always watching over us. And that's, a, and that's true. That's a reality. So if we have a God, if it's our God, isn't it? Yes. Our, not for me. Our father. And our father. And not for me. That's a selfish thing. Our Father. Our God. Amen. Our Savior. Amen. Our Deliverer. Yes. Our Protector. Amen. You, it is not going to be happy if I don't look after you as well. My family, let me do this together. In my closing, I know if you watch long distance race, and you know to me, they see them African boys, you see all of them together running in it. Right? None of the run gone if each other, you know. If I four of them in it, you see them did that, I encourage one another and, and, and I drag each other. They're not, they're not, they're not run gone, and so, so let we not, let we help each other along this Christian pathway in this long distance. 
race that we have to run. Let we help one another in Jesus' name. Thanks for those wonderful words. It's very knowledge there. And what I've learned from Brother Tom tonight is if God allows it to happen, sometimes to prove to see what I will do. Is the man who was cursing David? God, David said, let leave him alone. Yes. Got something to go through, brethren. Yes. God, see if that malice is out of you. If the anger has left you. Sure. It's just a scripture, but it's for us today to take it. Yes. And if some of you, if anyone in here is like, and you've been cursed and you're going through pain and suffering by some adversary, and you want to retaliate, you want to take, your, take it in your own hands. God said to you, no, leave it alone. If you want prayer for that, the altar is open. I don't see no unsaved in here tonight. No sinners. All, all saved. Unless gentlemen, they want prayer. But we shouldn't be coming for repentance all the time. Shouldn't be. The man called, you might have heard about Bart Simpson. You know him. He was doing in school and he kept breaking rules. Before the principal, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Every week, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He's doing the same thing week after week. He's not sorry. He's just, he's just been rude. You know what seems to be I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Every week. Until they get rid of him. Can't fool God. Another one, you know, called Sean the Sheep. You know that one? I'm talking to young people, you know this, right? Very mischievous sheep. The man can't see. The farmer can't hardly see. And the sheep plan everything in his head. And they're doing mischievous. For the man to fall down and all that thing. You know, we need to watch it with that one. <laughs> I, I'm big, but I watch this show. You know why? I learn from them. Imagine, you better add something. I learn from this. So, question. It's brutal and natural. And you watch these things. And you show how the enemy uses things. To pluck, to set traps. And you know, we need to, we need to, you know, there's, there's a film which is called The Fort. Which is talking about The Fort, right? It's a true story. These men were in military fight. And they run out of ammunition. Run out, you know? And the enemy was outside waiting for the midnight to attack. They run out of bullets, they couldn't shoot them all to defend themselves. And they were about to surrender. And the court captain says, no surrender. Just stand there like this. Stand with your gun. You got it empty with the end. They don't know you're empty. But you stand like this. And the enemy watching you. She says you're gonna fire first. But you got no gun, you got no bullets left. But they're watching you over the fence. And suddenly they hear a trumpet. Reinforcement coming from the back. In the morning, there was reinforcement. Amen. And they, the enemy just scatter. Amen. What I'm saying, Bridget? Don't tell the enemy all what. Look. Bridget, let me finish this. The devil is not silly. The devil can't read your mind. He watch what you do. Then he follow on that. Yes. Only God knows everything. Yes. If you're on your phone, or oh, anything you do, anything you do, are you looking at something? What happened to the phone? The phone will remind you with pop ups. Because yes. the phone pick up what you're looking at. That's right. And it feeds you with that stuff. So the, that's what the devil does. You can't tempt you with things you don't know. But when you get into it and you just no desire, want it, yeah? then he brings temptation to you with that. And if you keep in it all the time, all the time, you'll fall in it. Because it over, overwhel overwhelms you. So if somebody's cursing you tonight and you're going through a problem, you don't know how to bear it. And you need prayer. You could be at work, you could be at home. Anyway, you have that, that feeling. The altar is open. And when you sing the song, as they, they come. There was one who was willing to die in my stead that a soul so unworthy might live and the path to the cross
choir, but can I have all the children, young people come to the altar, all youngsters, young ones come, all of you come, choir, young people, all young people, young, young ones. Praise the Lord, saints. It is a confirmation as I stood there, it says to me, all the young children should come for prayer. God is a good God. your children gather at the altar father God you are God and God alone we don't know why you call them Jesus but father God we are praying you cover them under the blood father whether they go to school college wherever they go nursery in the name of Jesus I pray you put your blood on them I pray no scheme of man no plan of Satan come against them and prevail I pray you plant your seed of righteousness Amen. In their heart, Lord. I pray as they come before you. I pray, God Almighty, we take authority over every plan of Satan. We rebuke and discharge. Reverse and scatter. The soul belong to you. Every one of them must serve you. In the name of Jesus. We claim them tonight. Wherever they go, they belong to you. No harm will come to them because they're under your protection. And the ones that are gone home and on their way home, I pray you cover them in the name of Jesus. Whether they're in a car or they reach home right now, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you put your blood on them. Father, we deliver them in your hand. No harm, no accident, nothing will come nigh them. Oh God, God, they belong to you. Cover them in the name of Jesus. They're in your hands, Father. And you say, who you hold in your hand? No one shall pluck out in Jesus' name. 
announcements.